Algebra 2, 4.2c, Linear Combinations and Eliminate Decimals and Fractions. If you haven't seen the previous videos for Chapter 4, you might get confused, especially 4.2a and 4.2b, all right? And 4.1 is in here also. Just click on this video's description and you can watch those. If all the variables in a system of equations have coefficients other than 1, you know, our buddy the invisible 1, we can use the multiplication and addition properties of equality as a linear combination to eliminate a variable. When our system of equations contains decimals, we can multiply each term by a power of 10 to get rid of the decimals before solving the system. And when our system of equations contains fractions, we can multiply the equations by constants that eliminate the fractions before solving the system. So let's see what happens with the decimals. We can multiply each term by a power of 10 to eliminate the decimals. So we see in the first equation, all we have are tenths, right? So we can multiply this first equation by 10. This one has hundredths. So we should multiply this one by 100. That's going to push this point 4 to be a 40, isn't it? And we get negative 3x plus 5y equals a negative 1 and a 1x, and we don't have to write that 1, do we? Minus 40, see, we distributed it in, equals a negative 38. Well, I still don't see a zero pair here, right? And we need to eliminate one of these variables. So remember, sometimes the system of equations won't have a zero pair, and in that case we can multiply every term in one or both equations by a constant to create values that will make a zero pair. So for this equation, the second equation, because it's got just 1x, we can multiply the whole thing by a negative 3 on each side, can't we? Then we'll have a zero pair with this negative 3x and that'll make a positive 3x. This makes positive 3x minus 120y equals negative 114. Now we can add the system. We've got this zero pair that's going to eliminate themselves, right, as an additive inverse, and a positive 5y minus 120y gives us 115y, and we get a negative 115 on this side also. We can divide both sides by this coefficient 115, and we get a positive 1. Remember, in the multiplication property of equality, Dividing each side by this coefficient 115 is the same thing as multiplying it by the reciprocal of the 115. We just, I like to do it with division when there's no fractions, all right? And I've got a problem over here that will do it with the reciprocal. Now that we know that y equals 1, we can substitute that 1 for y in either of the equations, it doesn't matter which one, to solve for x. So I chose this smaller equation, because I didn't want to multiply by 120 or 114, that was really big, so I chose this smaller, easier one, and I've got negative 3x plus 5 times 1, because instead of the y, we have a 1, and that equals a negative 1. Well, that means negative 3x plus 5 equals negative 1. It didn't change, because we're multiplying it by 1, right? Now we can use the addition property of equality to eliminate this 5 by adding a negative 5 to each side, and we get a negative 3x equals a negative 6. Now, using the multiplication property to divide again, we can divide each side by this coefficient negative 3, and we get x is equal to 2. This creates a 1, and negative 6 divided by negative 3 is a positive 2, so our solution is 2 for x and 1 for y, and that's our ordered pair. All right? So we just used powers of 10 to eliminate those decimals and make our life a little easier, see? And deal with some whole numbers. Now we can clear fractions from our system by multiplying each term by a constant also. If our system of equations is half x plus 2 thirds y equals 1, and 3 fourths x minus 1 third y equals 2, well, this first equation can be multiplied by 6. We can multiply each term by 6. And we can multiply each term here by 12. And you know how I got that? 2 times 3 is 6, and 4 times 3 is 12. That's how I got those numbers. See that? So now I'm going to multiply each term here by 6. So I'm going to distribute the 6 in to each of these. And also, we can't forget, this guy gets multiplied by 6 also. 
That's going to give us 6 halves x plus 12 thirds y equals 6. And when we simplify this, this becomes a 3x, that becomes a 4y, and we get 3x plus 4y equals 6. Now we get rid of the fractions. Now we can multiply each term here by the 12, and we distribute this 12 into each one of these. We don't forget to multiply after the equal sign by 12, and we get 36 over 4 x minus 12 thirds y equals 24. And that simplifies to 9x minus 4y equals 24. Now we can add the system. And look, we have a zero pair right here, plus 4y minus 4y. That was convenient, wasn't it? So now we've got, when we add them together, a 12x, and this was eliminated, and 24 and 6 is 30. So we have 12x equals 30. Multiplication property says we can divide each term on each side by this coefficient 12. That creates 1x, and 30 over 12 simplifies to 5 halves. See? 5 can go into, uh, I'm sorry, 6 can go into 30 5 times, and 6 can go into 12 2 times, so we have 5 over 2. Now we can substitute these 5 halves for x in either equation. So, I chose the 3 fourths x minus 1 third y equals 2. And we put the 5 halves in for the x, and we get 15 over 8 minus 1 third y equals 2. Now this 2 is the same thing as 16 over 8, isn't it? And that's going to help us making this improper fraction when we have to subtract, because we want to eliminate this and get the y by itself, right? So let's subtract this 15 eighths from each side. That'll create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And all we're left with is one third y on this side. And if we look at this 2 as a 16 eighths, we could subtract the 15 eighths and get 1 eighth. Now we're going to use the multiplication property of equality by multiplying by the reciprocal on each side. And because this is a fraction and it's negative, remember reciprocals keep their sign, so it's going to stay a negative even when it's a reciprocal. We're going to multiply each side of the equation by negative 3 over 1. That's going to create a positive 1 on this side, 3 over 3, right? So we have a positive y. And on this side, we're going to have a negative 3 over 8. See? There we go. Bitsy just sneezed. All right. So that means our solution for x is 5 halves, and for y, it's negative 3 eighths. See? That wasn't too bad, was it? So both linear combinations or the substitution method will work to solve systems of equations, but when the coefficients are fractions, it's easier to use the substitution method, and it's easier to multiply by the reciprocal when they're fractions. When they're not fractions, when they're like this, it's easier to just use division to simplify it. See? All right, our next video is 4.2d, and we're going to talk about Kramer's rule for two equations. And I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist so you can use it for studying, review, or for catching up on the videos of mine that you've missed. There's going to be a link to the Chapter 8 playlist from Algebra 1 for Systems of Equations because I talked about all of this in Algebra 1. So you'll be able to watch that also for some extra deep learning, okay? Maybe I said it in a different way or used different problems. Maybe I even used a problem that you've got in your textbook. Who knows? All right, so keep trying, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.